The following podcast is a Dear Media production. You look beautiful from this angle. Thank you. You look beautiful from this angle, too. Thanks. Okay, so wait. Okay, so welcome back to... We're literally in the midst of conversation, and then I was like, wait, what? we're on the mic anyway, so let's just go. We were talking about that resurface interview of Taylor Swift that I'm just like, was cringing so hard yeah. with Ellen, but okay, so keep going. So I was talking about how... But like, welcome um, back, y'all. Sorry. Yeah, welcome back. Hi. Um, good Sorry to interrupt. Good to be back. Um, I was talking about how one of my past clients was a producer on The Ellen Show, is this what you want me to yeah, yeah, do? Yeah. And basically, um, he spoke lovely things about her, said she was incredible and like more reserved, you know, obviously on camera was very outgoing. Right. Um, but like a lot of us like introvert extroverts, but so or extrovert introvert, I don't know which way around, but basically she was super kind. And then a lot of the, pe- the hate that she got was from like disgruntled employees I can see that. that like, you know, just were being little bitches, they I guess. Say it was like a toxic work environment. So I was like, yeah. oh, okay. Well, because well, he worked aren't directly. We, aren't they all? <laughs> yeah. I mean, ho- yeah. But no, hopefully he, not, but I'm just saying. He worked directly under her and like he was a main producer on the show. And yeah. he was like, it wasn't like that at all. Like everybody loves, loved her. And he's pretty like, you know, blunt. Like he, he works on another show now. I probably can't say because then they would like, I don't know. No, but basically, yeah, there's a lot of people. I was like, well, who's your, you know, who's the worst person you've ever had on the show? Who's the best? And um, I also probably can't say those on the show. Either, That's okay. Right. But. <laughs> no, but there are people there yeah. are, that are worse than the best. I yes. wish, okay, you can tell me privately. And after. well, all that to say, guys, just like it matters how you carry yourself and how you treat other people. And the, um, I guess like, you know, a lot of times people don't know who the producer is on the show. So they'll come on acting like an asshole. Right. And then once they realize who's in charge then they completely change their t- oh, tune. Oh, 100%. And they remember, like people remember that stuff. Oh, 100%. So always, just always be kind. You, you should know? always be kind. And I think, I think, you know, maybe in her like older age, like not that she's old, but like Ellen DeGeneres, I feel like, like we were, we originally got on this conversation because we were talking about Barbara Walters. Like I personally like think she's iconic and amazing, yeah. which we both said that. But yeah. like, of course, she did some shady ass shit. I'm sure like one right. day, God forbid, when I die, people are going to be like, she was lovely. We loved her. She was funny. She was great. She did a couple fucked up things. Well, and like <laughs> We all have these right. things. And Barbara like paved the way for a lot of women to be in this industry. But also like, yeah, she was fucking brutal in a lot of interviews. Yeah. And we were talking about the Britney Spears one. That's she. I mean, it's all it's so sad to watch it's that. T- it's tough to watch. Just like, honestly, if you watch the one with Taylor Swift when she's a young girl, like it just like went viral on TikTok. It is hard to watch. Yeah. You're just like she's making her ring a bell when a guy on screen pops up that she wrote a song. About. It's just like yeah, she's like begging Ellen. her. We're talking about Ellen. Yeah. Ellen now. Yeah. yeah. She's begging her to stop. And it's yeah. just like brutal. But I feel like in Ellen's older age, she got a bit more testy. Do you know the iconic yeah. interview with Dakota Johnson? No, but no. with the birthday party. No. Ellen DeGeneres has Dakota Johnson, obviously the girl, the actress from Fifty yes. Shades of Grey. Yes. I, and married to Chris I Martin. I love her kitchen, by the way. She's like, that's why I wanted a green kitchen. Oh, Johnson oh had a green I kitchen. love a green kitchen too. Yeah, okay. Right. Wow. Me too. <laughs> so um, she she basically had her on the show and was like, um, something, something, something. Yeah. Why didn't you invite me to your, made some snarky remark about not being invited to her birthday party, but was like pulling up photos from her birthday party yeah. to like talk about whatever. She's like, and thanks for not inviting me. And apparently, I don't, I didn't deep dive this much. I didn't care this much, but apparently they've um, had little like snarky tiny little snarky beefs before and Dakota on the show goes well that's not true Ellen I did invite you and she's like mm, you didn't but we'll pull up photos and it'll be and I'm sure it was lovely and she goes no Ellen I invited you I we can ask I'm sorry and she pointed to like a producer backstage and then they like camera swings over and you could just tell the guys like mm, and like her personal assistant whoever it was and she's oh like God. she's like did I not invite her I did invite her and the the guy goes yes you did you were invited and El- I mean it was it was like wait, what did Ellen slap do? Slap in the face. Ellen is just like shocked. I mean, she composed herself a little bit. She was like, oh, I just don't remember that. Hmm, I must have been busy. She was like, yeah, well, I must have been busy. That's why I didn't come. And like makes a funny joke about it or something. But like Dakota did not, not back Dakota. down. So see, then it's hard. Yeah, I mean, obviously, like. But I think in her older age, she just got feisty and like everyone was just like, you're not like coming across very. Which I get it. Like we're all human. We don't yeah. all have to be lovey bubbly Dories the yeah. whole time of our whole lives. But like Dory. that is what her her time and her show was about. So like honestly, yeah. I'm sorry, you can't just like turn into this little like snark. You're not Andy Cohen yeah. on Watch What Happens Live. <laughs> like you're Ellen DeGeneres. Like fucking be cute and bubbly and sweet. Don't be snarky and mean yeah. to people just because you're like I'm fucking Ellen DeGeneres. I can do whatever I want now. I it's know. Like, I know. I I think too. She went through a lot in the '90s when like be, coming out as gay. Yeah. And yeah. So all that who knows she probably got to her old age and was just like i don't fucking care anymore i'm exhausted fuck it i think she was like i don't fucking want it when they were like yeah she's coming off prime time i think she was probably like fucking great yeah yeah (laughs) great i'm done honestly yeah she's i saw yeah anyways but 
Um, I don't even know how. We were just talking about that off the show. We were just randomly talking about that. Okay, here we are. Haley Ringo back in fucking action. So we, um, before we came on the podcast, remember if you guys recall, we'll do a little side by side. The last you already know we're like really funny because of the last episode. You already know Haley's super funny. Um, no, the last (laughs) episode, and we'll definitely do a side by side. We were in literal gowns. Her and I were in gowns. Yes, I was in. My tits were popping out. I was in red. It was gorgeous. Courtney saw a lot of my boobs that day. Um, It was stunning. And so today I was like, can we? Can we be chill? Do you like, listen, should I just throw on some spray tan in the ninth hour and just, and I go, right. no, 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 pause. Don't, don't put on spray tan. I don't have on spray tan and I'm just going to like wear something that covers my entire body. Like look at my like hands next to my face right now. Hey. Not the same color. <laughs> also, before we get into this, I'm like, when you're planning a wedding, self-care is just out the window. Like I sleep. No sleep. No. Mm-hmm. Well, we went through what we were going to wear and we decided on being casual, cozy, whatever, but your hoodie that you have on. Oh, mine says, I love oh, you. mine says, I love you. Say it back. It's I by did. Lonely Ghost. Yours says Landed. Yes, I did wear this because um, I I love Landed and I need to bring it back. And we were talking about this, this yes. morning. I'm- so I want to bring up because I have it here. So this is the guys, this is the notes. I've not added anything else to this note page. Um, this is what I wrote the last time she was here and we didn't <laughs> get into any of we it. We did not do not one of thing. them. We did none of them. None of so them. I pulled it back up and you know, I have written on here. So again, this is not, you talked about wanting to bring your podcast back. What is it's it? It's called Landed Late Night. Yeah. Landed, Landed Late, Night. Late Night. Yes. And it started out as a podcast because I was like scared to start my own show or whatever. And then I was like, fuck this. And I read You Are Badass and I was like, fuck this. I'm yeah. going to make my own show. So then in 2019, I started doing that on YouTube. And yes. so I would have a show with, we had our second bedroom as like a studio space and it was this whole thing. And then COVID hit and I took a breather and I chilled out and I chilled out for a little too long. And now I'm like craving, craving to bring it back. Well, yeah. I have written on here. If this is helping you at all whatsoever, I have written on here. Tell Haley how you tried to copy her entire landed late night set <laughs> because uh, I was so, I was so obsessed with it. I was so, uh, it was before I ever had a podcast. It was before anything. And I told Anna Grace, I just don't know how to make a podcast. I don't even know where to start. It was before I even thought to do it with Mary Carlisle. Like I was just going to do one on my own. I was going to do yeah. all this stuff. And I was like, it's like, I want it to be like Haley's. And she was like, you could like call her and pick her brain. I'm like, no, because like, I literally like, I don't know how to say that. I just want to copy hers. That's, and she's like, it's that's honestly like, I, was obsessed I would with have it. been honored honored because i remember she told me this anna grace was like yeah shannon said she wanted to be on your on she wants to be on late night or landed would have loved to i even know the name oh my god and i was like no she doesn't are you serious and i was so excited i still love to be on it yeah well when i started back up which i'm gonna fucking do because i just hired uh kellyanne's business coach because i need to get my ass in fucking shape do it um so i'm gonna get it i really am gonna get started but after the wedding after the wedding okay so we also and i'm gonna tell you guys a brief story and just because this is just a tiny bit funny um not laughing at your expense but like we 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 have to myself all the time we have to laugh through our traumas sometimes or else we'll never be okay so um we're all gonna hold you accountable for starting landed back because it's just so amazing you have to get it back up and you can be um, my first guest i would love to but i just wanted to let you know that pink everywhere i've been obsessed with it for for, (laughs) you had the cityscape in the background they needed the curtains i literally tried to copy the curtains on my wall okay the city well the curtains are from cb2 this or West Elm, the cityscape was literally wallpaper off Etsy from this Cute. German person. And I had, um, yeah, and I like got it blown up. It was so easy. And then plywood stuck together, you know, just casual, like nailing some plywood together. Loved it. And putting wallpaper up. I loved it. I wanted to copy it. And I think you'd be great to bring it back. So we're going to hold you accountable for that. But I wanted to tell you guys that, um, so I decided, I'm like, you know what? Like, I'd love to have Hilly back on. I call her. I'm like, we be on today? She's like, yeah, yeah, no problem. And then um, I... <laughs> I pick up the phone and I call Anna Grace and I'm like, okay, this is so funny. I just called Haley because Haley and Anna Grace obviously know each other. And I go, so I had this great idea because a lot of my listeners are totally like at the age and at the point in their lives where they're all getting married. They're maybe going to be in weddings. Their yeah. sisters are getting married. They're probably all getting married. We're just like, you know, in that phase of our life. So what better than to have someone who's literally getting married in Italy, my dream, and getting married soon in Italy and is a wedding photographer, like an incredible, incredible, incredible wedding photographer. This is her trade and like what a great perspective to have your point of view of planning a wedding from a wedding photographer's point of view who's been at a trillion weddings in her life etc cetera, etc cetera. have all these like wedding 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 ideas I'm like this will be the theme and then I, I I text Haley I'm like by the way if it's you're too rushed or anything today like you just let me know I don't want to do anything to like cause your day any more uh. hectic because you said it was busy she was like no I am so fucking stressed out about my wedding. If I don't have to hear one more thing about my fucking wedding, I will be so happy. I'm about to go to therapy so I can just get it all out. Your podcast will be a nice, relaxing breather and break from everything fucking wedding. And I was just sitting on the phone. I was like, it was an audio. She sent me a voice message and I was just re- listening to it. Like, there's was a lot of fucks. It was a lot of like, wait, fucking. And then, fucking, 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 f
hear me out. <laughs> um, I hope this isn't triggering, but I had this thought that maybe our episode could be about, <laughs> and I was like, I feel so fucked up for saying that, but like that is no. kind of what I had in mind. And then you said, no, it's good because it'll be nice and raw and yeah, fresh. Yeah, it will be raw. I'll like be straight up. And also too, it's, I told you when I got here, like I need to change my perspective. Like a lot of like my anxiety and my stress is just in my own fucking head. So yeah. this is, it's going to be good. And honestly, like hopefully it'll be helpful to future brides because, because yeah, for those of you that don't know, I've been shooting weddings for 11 years now. And so I've seen everything from A to Z of like, you know, what happens at weddings, what can go wrong, what usually goes right, X, Y, right. Z. And, but even still, now after like all that time, planning your own wedding is so, so different. And I just have so much respect for wedding planners beyond belief now. Like, I mean, I already did, but this is right. like the amount of detail that right. goes into a wedding. Um, unless you're at a venue where like they do everything inclusive, which some do, but a lot don't, most don't. Um, it is like, I mean, the minute things like what color napkins, like what silverware color do you want? I don't fucking care. But the problem is I I do. Oh, so that's where I'm causing my own stress because I'm so particular. I'm so type A. And a lot of times, like I know what I will don't want but I don't know what I want I get that I full that's a very I think that's very relatable all yeah. like I was just getting like you guys will love this getting merch designs back and I'm like okay love this love this love this don't love this she's like perfect what do you want instead of that I'm like couldn't tell you could you yeah, couldn't could. tell you so I, I just know don't, I don't like know. it <laughs> yeah. I don't love that design but I know what you need from me now is an example of what I do like and yes. I can't tell you yes. <laughs> and I'm like please just like I, I love your work I love what you do like can you just like think of it in your brain and I'll just say yes or no because really I'm like I, I feel very related to that statement like yeah you know you don't like something but you don't know what you do want I feel like one of the most exciting things about a new year is that you have literally no idea what adventures are in store for you I mean I obviously know this is true because if you told me last year all the things that I would end up doing and all the people I'd end up meeting and all the places I would go in 2022 I would not have believed you. And what better way to prepare for 2023's adventures than learning a new language? I used to think that sounded like such a daunting task. But then I found Babbel and Babbel makes it fun and exciting. You don't feel like you're in a boring classroom learning a language. You get these addictively fun and kind of easy somehow bite-sized language lessons that make you feel confident in learning something as different as a whole new language. Obviously, others agree with me because it's sold more than 10 million subscriptions. I love using Babbel because these lessons, which by the way, you legit only need like 10 minutes for, were created by actual language teachers and experts. And I've used other apps before and you can totally tell that it was all made by like an AI. And that is something that I just like could legit not grasp at all. With Babbel, even the voice components that you hear in the lessons are voiced by actual native speakers, not some weird computer-generated voice. You can choose from 14 different languages. I'm currently learning Spanish, and they have like a ton of different ways to learn outside of just the lessons. They've got like games, podcasts, stories. They even have these live classes if you want to shake things up a bit. It also has a 20-day money-back guarantee, which I think is great. Right now, you can get up to 55% off your subscription when you go to babbel.com slash probably. That's babbel, B-A-B-B-E-L dot com slash probably for up to 55% off your subscription. Babbel, it's language for life. Yeah, well, and so this is like what I've, so my invitation girl actually helped me figure out how to um, manage that and yeah. to like come up with like solutions essentially. Nice. So, because I told her, I was like, w when planning the invitation suite, like I wanted it to be our, the theme of our wedding. Um, yeah, so for those of you who don't know, we're getting married in May in Italy in Florence. Yes! Oh my God, it's, I cannot wait to see pictures. I'm so it's, excited. It's my dream to be married in Italy. Literally you my will. dream. You will, you will. I already you know, you're, it's going to happen. It's okay. going to happen. And I can help you plan it. I can literally facts. take your photos. I can do whatever you need. Facts. But facts. Um, it's on the record now. You can't take it back. No, no I, take backs. It's uh, no take backs. Um, I've like researched every venue in Florence. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Perfect. Um, but yeah, I was talking to my invitation girl and I was like, okay, I want it to be the theme is like Gucci garden, but like Harry Styles esque style wise, like he's crazy and out there lots of colors whatever i immediately understand everything you're saying thank you see yeah she gets <laughs> like, it but i'm like I put it on a graphic design board no yeah. i would ask courtney to do that but yes like, i i am envisioning what you're envisioning and i love it thank you well that's what so i was like okay 
I have made a Pinterest board. I curated the fuck out of it. Um, and I sent it to her and she was like, honestly, this is amazing. Cause it's like, but you know, from even still though, it wasn't detailed enough. So like with the invitations, oh, we just, I just, I'm stressed. Approved. I'm not even engaged. <laughs> I know. I mean like there's invitations. Like most people don't give a fuck about the invitations, but of course me, I'm like, I very much care because it's the first thing that everyone, the guests get about the wedding and it's going to set the fucking tone and like has to be perfect. So and I'm I should such not perfectionist. An, I should not send an e- e- invite whenever I get married. Uh, you, you know what? Social suicide. Honestly, maybe you should because <laughs> like, it's so much more chill um i will say though for all the brides listening i i love a magnet save the date i don't i know it seems jank but like it is when i get them in the mail it's so much Wait, easier why does it seem jank i love them you know what i get save the dates all the time and then i have to find a magnet to attach it yes. and then that can look a little janky because i've got like out of like chicago yes. and like English or you're breakfast. taping the back and then it like sticks to your yeah. fridge yeah Anyways, I, lo- I love a magnet. go with a magnet it's also cheaper everyone likes it it's easier Anyways, I did it. It's whatever. Um, but the invitation suite. So it, I just approved the designs. And it's what does gonna, that mean, invitation suite? So basically, it's like the actual wedding invite, uh-huh. the folio. I'll show you after this episode because okay. it's so sick. The fo- So it like the folio is what it goes in, right? Okay. Now, not everybody's is like this. This is like, this is I went way. overboard. Okay, yeah. okay. I've um, seen these before, though, online where someone gets something and it's like a whole experience opening it. And yeah, stuff. that's kind of what this nice. one is. Yes. Yeah, so she sketched like our venue, um, the gardens, a wide shot of it, like our hotel that we're staying at. Stunning. The, stunning. Yes. Stunning. Spagliato. Stunning. Splash of Prosecco. Stunning. <laughs> Stunning. No, but really, like, I, all my voice notes to her, I was like, um, <laughs> I'm like sick. This is gonna be so sick. Like I'm just wait. Getting- that's how I talk to my beautiful designer Haley West for my merch. I'm just always like, oh, I fucking love that. Sick, bro. She's like, okay, yeah. The next designs. <laughs> I don't like. Am I? I'm sorry. I think I'm scaring I'm like, you. Sorry. But, um, but yeah. So like, I don't even know where I was going with that. But um, Nicole at every little letter. That's who I use. So we can just like hype her up because she's so fucking great. amazing. Can um, I ask how many people you're having at your wedding? Yeah. So that right now there's 150 who have RSVP'd and there's that's big. Yeah, no, it's, I wanted like 80 people, which is why I wanted to max 80 people. Okay. You, also did, you, went, you in, did go 70 over that, just so you know. I did go, se- well, okay. I'm no mathematician, but. See, but. <laughs> so I'm from Texas um, and our family, I have like 30 first cousins. Um, Same. So our list who we invited was like 230 something. And knowing that it was in Italy, I was like, okay, we'll probably be able to reach 150 Based but I was thinking not being able to come. we would be at like 80 and now then like everyone's coming. Actually, the majority of our family isn't coming, but all of our friends and family friends are coming. Turn up. So it's going to be lit. They're like, let's go to Italy, bitch. Yeah, let's go to Italy, bitch. Um, but yeah, I think everyone's ready to party and, and like relax. But I get basically that. like. And I'm stressed the fuck out. Yeah, no. And I there's some TikTok that went viral like two days ago. It was like, uh, it's like. All I got, won't I'm gonna say I'm delicious. And it like cuts to like the girl, she's like, I'm so stressed out. Like behind every really stressed out girl is a man who literally has no idea what's going on. I've and it's like, it. and the guy's like, just like fucking Brian. Like <laughs> Brian's like, hey babe, how's it going? Like I told him yesterday about like all this the shit. Like I listed things I had to do. He's like, that's not included with the venue. I'm like, the fuck the fuck? No, <laughs> it's not included with the venue. I'm having to do this myself. Like, I'm like, uh, yeah. So then I was like, you oh, know, I can tell you're actually like annoyed. You're like, no. no. I was like, let me, I'm going to make you a fucking list, all right, of the things that I've had to do and I still have yet to do. It's like, um, it's like Haley Bieber being like, yeah, Justin is like very involved. He like wants to know about the flowers. You know, every bride that's like, shut has, the fuck up. Every bride that's husband is just fucking eating cheese balls. Like, hey, babe, hope you got it figured out. It's like, shut the fuck up, Haley. <laughs> no, I do. I, I uh, wish I had a bride yesterday tell me that her fiance uh, she's also a photographer and I'm shooting her wedding in April and she's like, yeah, he's booked everything. Like, it's amazing. And I was like looking at Brian who's in the room and I'm like, do you hear this? Do you fucking hear this? Do you hear this right now? <laughs> but um, no, I mean like he he wants to help. Brian also just doesn't care about yeah, like yeah, a lot like, of you do stuff. You do babe. He's like, dude, if you want like hot pink neck, go for it. Like, I don't care. And I'm like, that's fine. Um, Great. But can you just, I'm like logistically, I detailed design wise, I got it. Logistics, not my thing, but I'm yeah. yet, I'm having to do a lot of logistics. My planner is amazing. But they're, you know, they're, she's in Italy. And so she has a lot of other weddings going on. Yeah. And I think most brides are not as particular as I am. Yeah. So like, I'm kind of a control freak. Um, and so I'm trying not to be like a bridezilla. I'm only really a bridezilla to like Yourself. myself. <laughs> uh, but uh, I hope, I mean, vendors listening might be like, no, nope, no, I doubt like, you are. You seem like you're very kind to other people. I try to be, but, um, but yeah, so I feel like, I mean, between, I, I don't even know, like advice. Why, like what I don't, uh, huh. Well, you said, I feel like we did get off topic and I'm trying to remember how to get us back. But you yeah. know, it's really hard for us. We so were talking about how your invitations. Yes. And you were just saying fantastic. they're fantastic. So, but you were like, for instance, our invitations, are you just saying how stressed out you were with just oh, something that's like right. small well, like, as the invitations? Right. Like most people like don't care about that. And I definitely cared. So I think like 
the biggest advice I've had for any of my brides throughout the years, especially on the day of, is just like, hey, this is going to go by so fast. Like yeah. it's usually eight hours, 10 hours max, like throughout the whole day. Right. And I'm like, it's it's a tiny little glimpse. Like you've been planning this for a year, over a year sometimes. Right. And like it's going to go by in two seconds. So literally, if you need to take a Xanax, take his fucking Xanax. Like chill out, relax. So you can be present and in the right. moment. And I have to tell myself that every single day. Like yeah. it is actually, and I also too now, I just have so much more like empathy for my own clients and my own brides. When I show up on a wedding, I'm so much more emotional. Like I cry more because I just, now I understand like all that goes into it and yeah. how they're feeling on some level of like the importance of the day and right. like what it means to them. And so I feel like it's given me um, a, a, a much new perspective just of like how to be a good photographer and how to capture the moments that they're going to want. Right. You know, I feel like I'm, I'm, I, I feel like I'm good at that in general, but this a different is perspective. different perspective. Yeah. And so it's been crazy. <laughs> it's been just like crazy. It's been crazy. Have you had any issues with like, well, obviously you just said logistically, like your planners in Italy. So like, yeah. that's tough. What do you think? Like, what's something that you're, well, Italians are really chill. Like they're super chill. They're, they're always, that's because they're having spagliato. spagliato splash of prosecco. prosecco stunning. Um, and they're like an um, April spritz, like spritz o'clock every day. I don't know why we're doing British accent. I don't for either. Italy. I, I, it's I, I, o'clock. I, it, it says five o'clock every day. That's over the top. No one talks like this actually, but, um, <laughs> No, I but wish my planner did. I wish they were like, I wish I was more chill like them. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. I feel like whenever you travel to Europe, well, for me, I always leave being like, wow, I got to, I got to relax. Like, yeah, everyone is. A Americans lot are doing it wrong. <laughs> um, I think in general, compared to other Americans, I'm pretty high strong. And then whenever I compare myself to like Europeans, I'm definitely like, definitely, definitely need to take it down a couple yeah. notches. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure. So I, I, um, I like to think I like constantly have this mindset when I'm really, really stressed out. Um, this French lady will never see this podcast, so I can say this, but basically I met this woman, uh, when I was in Nice, the South of France, I was literally in college, like, and, and swimming in this ocean or this like random side ocean. And, um, this woman was laying on a dock and she was naked. It's a nude beach, obviously, which I love. So I'm right. like full blown naked too, obviously, yeah, obviously. So we were to the dock and she's just like laying out there. I thought she was like mid thirties. So we started talking and I'm like, I think I asked her somehow, how old are you? And she was like in her fucking 60s what no wrinkles like literally looked like she was in her 30s and so i'm i'm just gobsmacked i'm like what what do you do <laughs> what and do you do? she's like um you know in her french accent she's like i just wear i swim every day and wear a lot of sunscreen and i remember being like that's the life that's okay the fucking life and then every time i get really stressed out i just channel this french woman on this dock and i'm like okay Haley." you're choosing to be stressed out. You could also just choose to chill the fuck out and be this, this woman you on could, this dock. You could just wear a lot of sunscreen, swim <laughs> a lot, and swim. just chill the fuck out. But I'll, me, my first question, what does her husband do? Because I'm like, what? Oh, what allows, really, really rich. <laughs> really, really fucking what rich. What allows husband. you to put sunscreen on yes. and swim all day? Yes. How do you do that? Yes. You, now, that's that's actually not cool because she could have fucking sold a tech company at age 20 and that's why she's doing it. But yeah. I'm like, yes. why can you just put sunscreen on all day and yes. swim all day? Because that... Or she's like a... like a Seems like something that not a lot of people can do. Right. I mean, we were in a really weird part of France, so I'm like, or she's just like genuinely lives oh, in the town and like oh, runs like a cheese shop or something. Yeah, and just like does something so true. Something wow. really cool. You I'm know? a really judgy bitch. I'm like, yeah, who's your rich dad? <laughs> who's your daddy? She's like, I'm my own fucking daddy. She's like, I'm my own daddy. I have a cheese shop off of the road, bitch. You want to fight? Now you're fighting the woman that always wears sunscreen. Now we're in the water and we're doing some uh, avatar shit in the under. I don't even know. Yeah. No. Yeah. Okay. Did it? It, it did. A, it, it was very peaceful ending. But um, that's good. Anyways, that's just like a nice visual. I like to if brides out there just picture you're this French woman on this dock and you're nothing really matters because guys all these things that I like get so stressed out about at the, at the end of the day and same for like what I tell my clients I'm like the tiny little details that we get so hung up on literally don't fucking matter yeah like they it, it is hard because you're spending a lot of money right you're spending a lot of time that's a stressor for and it's sure a stressor. and so you want it to be a certain way and trust me I get that more than I am like like I said the most particular human but it does at the end of the day you're marrying the love of your life or you should be and if you're not you leave um you, you leave <laughs> get them right now. Get out. right now so that's you know that should be what's really most important and what you're like looking forward to and so but destination weddings help with that because by you get there early and by the time the wedding comes around everyone's been drinking and chilling the whole time and you're, you're like you're vibing all right, if you girly pops have been following me for a while, then you already know that I've been using care of vitamins for legit years. I think actually around five years. 
Now, I love these things for a multitude of reasons and have gotten all my family to start taking them as well because anytime I go home and they see my cute little personalized packs, they're like, wait, I need that. And it's great because outside of it being personalized with your name on the packet, it's like it literally says Shannon on the packet. I love it. It's completely personalized with what your body needs. You just take this easy, in-depth five-minute quiz and it asks you all about your body, your lifestyle, your day-to-day consumptions, and health goals. Now, this is the part though. This is the part where we got to be honest like how many drinks you have a week and we all know we'd be having that wine but it's great because like me who be having that wine in my pack i get magnesium which is helpful because you can be deficient in magnesium when consuming alcohol it explains it all in this pamphlet they give you too i love it i've got ashkawanda in my pack as well for concentration we've got b12 for energy probiotics for my gut health and everyone i think i'm doubled up on my gut health too the probiotic because everyone wants good gut health. And I can see a serious difference in my digestion when I'm consistently taking my care of vitamins. Each shipment comes with a customized pamphlet showing you exactly what's in your individual daily packs and why it was recommended specifically for you and your health goals, which was personalized by Dr. Backed recommendation, taking all the guesswork out of what supplements are best suited for you. Because God knows I don't know any of this stuff. So we need, we need the doctors to come in here. Also, for all of us trying to take care of sweet mother earth a little bit more, you can take comfort in knowing that care of's daily vitamin packs are made of plant-based compositable film so you can stress less about your impact on the environment. I am always traveling, as you guys know, so having these individual packs that are like already made up with everything I need in them is just so much more convenient than packing a bunch of different bottles of pills. And y'all already know that I hooked it up with a code. For 50% off your first care of order, go to takecareof.com and enter code probably 50. That's a whopping 50% off your first order that'll head straight to your door by heading to takecareof.com and entering code probably 50. You're welcome. Nice. And I think knowing you, you'll have everything planned out so that when you do get there, you can actually just fucking chill and relax. Hopefully that's, I don't think you can, uh, I was about to say, I don't think you can overplan, but I think you can because the I feel like the best memories I have are when there isn't really a plan and yeah. you're just like going with the flow and because the bet you're, you're allowing for like these memories and things to happen totally when I feel like you're so stressed you're energetically like blocking off you're like you're like this 100 percent. so all the fun things you're like oh I don't want to be around her she's like really negative energy yeah 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 you're like, no yucky um so do you think that it's been harder because it's destination because you have like are you having to talk to people that are doing venues or is there anything that you're like I spent so much time on that. And then once the task was completed, I was like, why did I spend so much time on that? Just one more nugget of advice for, or you're like, no, everything's important to plan. Well, I, let me get back to you on that question when the planning's over. Cause I still feel like I have so much left to do. Um, I and will you're getting married in May. Yeah. In May. You've got plenty so of five, time. It feels that way. But then I thought that my birthday was five months ago and I'm like, that feels like it was yesterday. So oh, when shit. I put it in perspective, when you I'm put like, things in perspective like that, it's not a lot of time. It's not a lot of time. Yeah. It's not a lot of time. So well, shifting gears from the wedding and back to famous people, I just thought about this because, you, well, I don't know, all the things I'm like, did we talk about anything in the last episode that we were supposed to? Probably not. We talked about aliens and like a million other things, but you, li- you lived in LA. You mm-hmm. moved from where? So I'm originally from Dallas, Texas. Got it. Went to school at UT in Austin. Okay. Then I moved know that. to Nashville for a summer in 2016 or 2015. I'm not sure. Um, for three months because I was trying to decide between living in LA or Nashville. Okay. Love Nashville. I was like, I want to move back here one day, but I need to get LA out of my systems. Yeah. Moved to LA for seven years, lived there, made amazing friends, like yes. my best, best friends and love my time there. Um, started was still doing photography there. I actually like, it was a pretty seamless move because one of my sorority sisters from UT was working for Junebug Weddings. And at the time, that was like right when wedding blogs were coming big. Yeah. Style Me Pretty was pretty big, was big at that time. I still think it still is. One. Um, Style Me Pretty, is that a wedding blog? Exactly, okay. yes. Um, but at the time it was like huge. And so, but Junebug had, because my friend was working there, she was like, hey, we have the top spot for marketing. It was like $900 for the entire year. And my name would be at the top of LA wedding photographers on this blog. I booked like 20 weddings from that alone that year. Just oh my gosh. Like, and you would ask people, how did you find me? They would be like, you were the top. Yeah. Really? Yes. $900 for the $900 whole year. $900 for the entire year. And I, and that's how I started my clients. 21 own. weddings. 20 weddings. Yeah. And so just from Ooh. that, I booked more than that, but from that alone was like 20 weddings. Wow. A year. So that was huge. And that made the move easy for me financially. And then I feel like around 2018, I started getting super burnt out. I was 
you know, I love shooting weddings, but like the aftermath, the editing and the, it's just a lot. Well, and you also, I'm sorry, but you're going to have brides who are like, like something that I always like, I always think about like the the things that people think in court producer Courtney's probably gonna like raise her head up and be like yeah the <laughs> things that people think can happen in post mm -hmm. like the things that brides and, and and I've been in weddings before where like the bride's like not wearing her veil or something they're like that's okay you can edit it in and I'm like what no, no, what no. are you talking no. about like yeah. <laughs> what do you mean no. and like something like like a bride being like okay I like these 86 photos but can you fix that piece of hair in front of my mouth on all of them yeah you're like no no yeah so it's just not no. it's not doable I think too like uh, honestly I and they want to really, right away I haven't had any I've had like two negative clients in my 11 years of shooting which wow. is incredible because I feel like tell me about I've it. just cold well I was actually I posted about this slightly the other day on my photo account but like I've how I got business was word of mouth like that's how I started my business in college at right least at UT yeah yeah and then because of that it's like people that know me are referring me to their friends so it's kind of like creating this community of like-minded people on some level yeah. as far as like character wise and personality goes and also on in Instagram I was I've always been like active so they knew my personality going into right it. right right um I've always been very bold I don't think like the people the clients that I have like the brides are just so fun and and chill and even if even if they're not like I also get that because I I'm like I usually try to over deliver if there's like a something on them that you know I know that I would want removed then I'll just remove it right but I obviously can't like you know put a photoshop a veil I mean I can <laughs> but it's not gonna look great that's right. not my, my skill set is not photoshop right, right 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 so I mean those things but I feel like you know the um I lost my train of thought completely sorry mm -hmm. I probably did that to you mm -hmm. um you were you always said you were saying that you've had negative clients in all 11 years you've only had two negative clients yeah yeah and that has been such a blessing because I think I was oh I was getting to like the burnout when I started feeling burnt out I was just editing constantly I I was I've always wanted to do like a million things. And at mm -hmm. that time I just felt really stuck in my career um, and stagnant and like just uninspired. And I feel like with a creative role that can happen a lot. Yeah. It does happen a lot. So I started reading. That's how I got into Landed. And I started, um, I hired my friend Alex as like a business coach and uh -huh. she helped me kind of like narrow down what it was I want in life right. and make like a roadmap of some sorts. And then I read You Are a Badass and like something just like clicked in my head and I was like, I need to do a podcast. I'm going to call it uh, Landed because I was on a flight. And my ex-boyfriend at the time was like, what if you called it Landed, but you capitalized LA? He was in marketing. And I was like, this oh, is cute. fucking brilliant. That is what it said. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And so I called it Landed and um, it started out as a podcast. And then that I did like maybe, I don't know, 20 episodes. of, And it, it went off. Like I was having tens of thousands of listeners a month but then I was like this isn't what I want to do like I want to be entertaining right I wanna be in front of the camera I want to be like having like a Jimmy Fallon show like that was my thing I was like I want to I want to have be the next Jimmy Fallon by and a girl version you know what and I hope I don't take a mess up your train of thought by okay. interrupting but you know what you did do that before and I think that was another thing that I was trying to emulate like like nowadays and I actually heard from like a long time podcaster he was like it's so fucking annoying nowadays you have to have video yeah. because everyone has video with their podcast yeah. everyone puts their episodes on YouTube everyone has fabulous stuff and I'm like yeah I know that's why I have producer Courtney because it's fabulous but that's just like a personal preference for me yeah. but he said it's like every podcaster now feels like they can't just grab that was like the art and beauty of podcasting that you could just grab a mic and look like shit and like have a face yeah. for radio and you just yeah. like start talking it is what it is right but now he's like all you fuckers make us all feel like we all have to have these video components we all have to have this but I'm like me personally like I just fucking love I love that the video <laughs> yeah. side of things yeah. I feel like stories are better I just and if you're listening to this and not watching that's fine because maybe you're on your commute whatever but like I love the video aspect and it landed you had that yeah. you guys were on set you looked like you were on a late night talk show and I and people didn't do that at the time yeah they really it wasn't as wildly emulated into podcast podcasting yeah so I so I feel like you were on the forefront of that for sure thanks and then I like got off of it and I feel like th like a lot of times I think because right before COVID hit I was having a lot of people's managers email me to be on the show and yeah. that felt really good because I was like because I wasn't making any money from it it was like a passion project I didn't but make any felt, money from this for a very long yeah. time you guys know that <laughs> but eventually like you do I mean if you just be consistent and so I was like on a fucking roll and then COVID hit and I just like got off my band the wagon whatever it's called new year new wardrobe however all y'all know i said i am trying to save shmoney in 2023 we are turning this into a finance podcast remember 
Okay, no, we're not. I'm kidding about that. But I am not kidding about an amazing shopping hack that I have for y'all. Fashion Pass. Now, Fashion Pass is amazing because it takes the commitment and the massive price tags off of amazing designer pieces. You're able to rent these gorgeous clothes, and it's unlimited for a flat price. And they legit have the best brands. They got for Love and Lemons, Amanda Uprichard, Free People, Show Me Your Moo Moo, and tons more. But honestly, I'm just listing a few of my faves right there. You can swap out your items as many times a month as you want. So it feels like you're just consistently shopping and getting new clothes every week. But for literally a fraction, a sliver of the price. I am currently on the trendsetter plan, so I get to pick four clothing items in every order, or I could pick three clothing items and two accessories, which is usually what I tend to do because I'm just a gal that loves a funky, cool piece of jewelry or like a fun bag to make my outfit pop. I honestly, I just find myself wanting these really cool, trendy pieces because as y'all know, because I've said it time and time again, I am the consumer. I will follow a trend baby, but then I'm just like over them in like a month or two, you know, because I'm human and that's how it works. So this just saves me so, so much money in that regard. And I don't want to gatekeep it from y'all. The shipping is super fast. They handle the cleaning for you. So no worries there. Just send it back in the pre-labeled bag they give you. And also if you do fall in love with the piece and you decide, Hey, this is more of a staple than a trendy piece. You can buy it from fashion pass and they give you mega discounts towards the purchase, like legit 30 to 70% off. And every month I get a $10 purchase discount that counts towards anything I buy. I have got a killer discount code for you guys as well. If you go to fashionpass.com and use code probably at checkout, you'll get $60 off your first month so that you can try it for literally $29. That's unlimited rentals for just $29 with the code probably. You're welcome. I think it's a very relatable thing to be on the steamroller and and pushing forward and just absolutely crushing something. And then all of a sudden something happens in life. I mean, like CC, my episode, my life got magic erasered where everything in my life came crashing down. And I was like, I just need to, like you said with COVID, I'm like, I just need to chill. And then people were like, when are you coming back? When are you coming back? When are you coming back? And I'm like, I love you guys for loving what I'm putting out there. But if I put it out there right now, you guys will not find me entertaining. You guys, I will be not putting out good content because I am not, I am not real Shannon right now. I am like a shell of a human of who Mm -hmm. I was. So you know what, Haley, I think like it's such a normal fucking thing to be like, I want to do that again. I want to do that again, but you need to do it at the right time. And I think you're in a great after your wedding. I think it's a great time. (laughs) I'm like, I'm not letting you do it for your wedding, but like, no, it's just a really, really normal thing to like have a standstill like yeah. in life. Like there's stalls all the time and that is like, okay. Well, even with like photo, like I'm a, I am though. I am before the wedding, I'm going to release new presets, which I'm really excited about. And there will be more film emulated. Oh, I love your presets. Thank yes. you. Well, I, these are like, those are like four years old. So I'm going to like, um, revamp. Uh, yeah. Revamp because I don't edit with those. I've, change them so much that I'm just going to release my new ones. Yes. And then I'm going to start selling limited edition prints. So I do a lot of like street photography, but I just never posted it anywhere. Right. Um, and so I have this one print I'm selling of Cat's Deli that I got, I took for Brian for his birthday. Um, and I got it framed and matted and it's like, I think it's so fucking sick. And I was like, why? Like, I just need to sell this print and do like, I'm going to sell 50 essentially. um, And that'll be it ever. And they're they're each going to have like a name. So we've gone through the photo and we've got come up with like creative names. 50 times of that photo. 50 different names. Yeah. And so I'm going to sell those. But like that's something that creative outlet I can do before the wedding that's not so chaotic yeah like landed but landed is like once you have the set and once you have a flow going it's like easier and it's fun. It's the like, do you make your own promo or does Courtney do it? Courtney does it. Oh, I, fuck yeah, I, yeah, Courtney. I mean, listen, what would we literally do without producer Courtney? Personally, for me, when I built this set for my podcast, um, personally, I mean, when I built this entire, um, when I built this myself. set that you guys are seeing right now, which, <laughs> and no, it literally like, oh, you know what I did remove though, you guys, I did take the kitchen trash can. Cause that was in the background of every shot. And we were doing this, like take on like the Vogue 72 questions. And there was just like a fucking kitchen trash can in the background. And I was like, Kendall would never. <laughs> Can she would never. never. <laughs> she would never. No, I, I think like it's really, really smart to try to take on as much as you can take on. And yeah. then I was producing really shitty quality things whenever I was trying to do it all. Courtney literally had to sit me down one day, produce Courtney, God bless her, and say like, hey, um, I'm filming the edit episodes. I'm making your um, clip reels. She understands my sense of humor and my comedic timing so well, which is so hard to find. Producer Courtney, you can never leave me. But she was like, why don't I just edit the, because I was editing the audio of the podcast, mm-hmm. right? So like a second ago when you and I were moving our mic, and that needed to be cropped out 
She's like, wouldn't it just make sense if I do that? And I was like, no, don't be crazy. I could never let anyone else edit the episode because, like, I am the only person who knows how to edit the episode. Yeah. Like, no, that's not true. Right. Like, a, But to relinquish the um, – I don't even want to say the control, but, like, I, I was so adamant about doing that. But, like, I would also – Back when Mary Carl and I had a podcast, I was in charge of editing the um, audio. Yeah, I remember. And I would wait to the last minute. It's like one of my worst characteristics. Yeah. And she would be like, you were driving me fucking crazy because like I was because I would give it to her to review the podcast and she was a co-host on it. So of course she'd want to review it. I'd give it to her at the 11th hour. Yeah. You know what I mean? And she'd be like, dude. And I'm like, well, I'm sorry. That's just how I work. And she's like, it can't be when someone else is in play. So like, which very, you know true i get it <laughs> that's very a great, valid <laughs> that's a great point okay and so like d- like de- delegating i was about to say deliberately delegating tasks to other people is hard for me because yeah. i'm like I'll, I'll just do it but like my god the second i was like okay Courtney, all right okay i guess you can try and then she gave it to me and i was like what the fuck one i had one less task on my plate and two you crushed that so yeah. like having the ability to like w- like recognize that you will do and this is in everyday life if you're like a husband and a wife and you've got kids and you're trying to do everything because you know you can do it better than your husband i'm going to tell you you definitely can do it better than your husband <laughs> but like it doesn't mean you should keep doing it just because yeah. you know it'll get done better right. eventually he will understand eventually they'll learn like your kids whoever like you cannot take on every Every single task in your life just because you know that it'll get done the way you want to get it done you have to relinquish the control at some point so that you can fucking breathe you told me earlier today that you were literally subconsciously holding your breath and you didn't realize current thing yeah and you would literally be like i gotta breathe and like you were just fucking crazy catching your breath because it's like breathing is like we don't it's not we're not consciously breathing like it's not like a thing like breathe in breathe out every five seconds like i was like you know i'll be like oh my god oh my god I wasn't breathing it's like that's just stressing but yeah I mean I think too when you relinquish control you realize like you know oh my god like of course people can do this just as good as me yes you like and it's it's just so freeing because that allows you to, to like expand your creativeness to come up with new ideas. It frees you up of like when you're so bogged down by like ta- tasks and, and doing all the things you don't like to do, like right. editing the audio, like, you know, for me calling, I hate culling photos, which is going through thousands. What's that? Oh, culling. You pick culling, C-U-L-L-I-N-G. Okay. When I go through and I pick images from the wedding and I'm like, I don't like doing that. You know right. what I mean? But when you, and I'm like, I'm being a hypocrite because I still haven't found anybody to edit for me or call for me. But like you're you're exactly right. Because yeah. once you do those things, it allows you to just create even more and to be more free in what you're doing and to live your life. It's worth the money. It always is worth the money. I feel like 100%. Now I know, y'all know, I don't like going to the grocery store. On top of just seeing everyone there that you don't want to see, I always accidentally go to the grocery store like hungry and end up buying a ton of random things that I never ever end up cooking. And just frankly, I waste it. But not anymore. 2023 is my year of cooking at home, baby. And listen, I get it. It's hard when you live in a place that has fabulous restaurants, but I'm bringing the delicious restaurant quality food straight to my doorstep with HelloFresh. It's cheaper and more convenient than grocery shopping, and it's a whopping 25% cheaper than takeout. So sign me up, baby. The recipes are ever-changing with over 35 different recipes a week. There's no way you won't find something for everyone. And if you're on a health kick this year, you can choose their calorie smart and carb smart options. You can even customize select meals by swapping proteins or sides. You can upgrade your proteins or add a protein to a veggie dish. The options are literally endless. The food is top quality and travels from the farm to you in less than seven days. So you all already know that it is fresh. Personally, I love their fast and fresh recipes because they're ready to go in like 15 minutes and I'm just a real on the go kind of gal. And y'all already know, that I got an amazing code for you. Go to hellofresh.com slash probably 22 and use code probably 22 for 22 free meals plus free shipping. That's hellofresh.com slash probably 22 for 22 free meals and free shipping when you use the code probably 22 at checkout. HelloFresh, it's America's number one meal kit. I also think that when you're doing things like in life, like let's just say like you work at a job, like this could be applied to so many things. Like let's say you're um, a nurse and you work at, I don't know, maybe those tasks are actually like legally delegated so that you can't just like give other people stuff to do. <laughs> okay, scratch that. Let's just say you work in a field and you're like, you're in a nine to five job where you are taking on so many tasks and you 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 might be unaware of this, but you might be the like bitch in the office because you're so stressed out because you're doing so much. And if someone's like, here, I can do that. You're like, no, I got it. I'll just do it. It's like you actually 
actually, if you would let others help you, yeah. you would realize that you really, really could like, of course, take on all your own responsibility. But right. at times I can recall times in my life where I've worked at, at like a law firm before. And this one girl was always so like, just honestly, like rude and stressed out. And I knew it's because she felt she had to do everything. Yeah. She's like, oh, I got it. I got it. Well, I guess I'll do it. I'm like, bitch, no one's asking you to do that. Yeah. It's a task any of us could do. You're the one insisting you do it. And I don't know, maybe she wanted the credit for it. Yeah. But like all I ever saw was her just stress the fuck out. And I'm yeah. like, someone else could do it. She's like, no, I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah. And I'm like, we, we literally, someone else could literally do it. So yeah. if that's you in your work field, you might be the office bitch and you might should think about it. Yeah. You might you know? need to reconsider you might your need position. To reconsider. Your, um, I think job. you're going to find your, <laughs> you might need to reconsider your job. <laughs> I think you're going to find yourself a lot more calmed. I think you're going to yeah. just do amazing things creatively as soon as like you delegate other tasks, like yeah. culling new yes. words that I learned. And I think your wedding's going to be fucking sick and I can't wait to see it. It's going to be in Italy. And that's like literally a dream come true of mine. So I, I'm, I'm just going to like land it. I'm just going to copy your wedding too. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. I mean, gladly, honestly, that is the best compliment ever but I am yeah I'm really really excited this season is it's uh, the other thing I was thinking about I was talking to Kelly about this the other day was like she was just saying to me hey you have like so many other things that take a priority right now that are that maybe like the world doesn't see that should like people are you know how do I how did she word it basically like I'm thinking that because I'm not excelling in my career and I'm not excelling at landed I'm not excelling at whatever well, because I feel like I'm excelling at photography, but I'm not excelling at like landed, which was such my like baby dream child. And yeah. to put that on the back burner for so long doesn't feel very great. But I think she was like, Haley, you've you've you're engaged. You're planning a wedding. Right. Like you're just in, you just bought a house. You're renovating the house. Like you're in a you guys different are renovating season. House beautifully. Yeah, we yeah. Well, it's ongoing, but I just don't post about it as much because <laughs> I'm like stressed. Please get it done. Um, but no, honestly, majority of people, the most DMs I've ever gotten about people wanting to see content was house renovation. Yeah, it's. I it's was like, upset. should I start I'm a house like DIY account? But hey, Kelly's right. You're in a different season yeah. in your life. Yeah, and, and so, so just like being kinder to myself and and being like and that's something I had to work on this is like what I was talking about in therapy today it was like hey yeah. be nice to yourself like you're doing just great this is me talking to myself yeah yeah like, you're fine breathe relax relax you don't need to it's, be anywhere do anything else it's hard and I and we can wrap it up too because I know you have a haircut to get to we have Thank things God. to do I love you guys sorry it's a tiny bit of a shorter guys. episode but Haley and I talk so fast that you basically got three hours of content okay <laughs> um but I I was saying to you guys before this podcast and I was talking to Anna Grace about it whenever I was discussing like goals in 2023 and I think I was really holding myself back from getting like 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 certain people on the podcast like maybe like a really famous person who totally has already told me like oh my god I'd love to be on your podcast mm -hmm. and I'm like oh there you said yes but then I find excuses to not have them on because I'm like I'm not going to interview them good enough like I'm not going to be a good enough interviewer mm -hmm. and then one day I realized and I told Anna Grace this I said I do not have to be an interviewer yeah. like like I need to be nicer to myself I'm like you could never have her on even though she literally already told you she's happy to be on your podcast you can't have her on it's going to be such a flop episode you're just going to ask her the stupidest questions you're not going to interview her and then I was like Oh my God, Shannon, you're not Barbara Walters. You're not, I'm honestly not even like an Alex. I think Alex Cooper is a great interviewer. Like, like I think all these people are as straight up interviewing people mm -hmm. in these podcasts that I listen to that I love of like interviewers. Like mm -hmm. I, I, I'm not that I want to make people laugh. I want to connect with people. I want to, yes, interrupt people by accident, but like, sorry to interrupt, but I like, I truly connect with people in a yeah. very like flow of conversation. So I see exactly what you're saying and you just have to be nicer to yourself and you have to say like honestly like the uh, what's the fucking quote comparison is a thief of joy, of joy i yeah. don't like compare myself to other humans as much anymore and i'm way better about that like i'm not like she's pretty i'm not but i have such an issue in my career being like i should be doing more i should be doing more and it's like same what you're doing is enough right and that sounds cheesy like you are enough but like truly what you're doing right now is enough it's okay yeah you will grow and grow and grow look where you're at last year to look at where you're at now like you always have growth whether you're really trying or not and yeah. we're both trying so yeah. well and I think mean, about how you just spoke to yourself like if you were someone told me one time like if you were to take this inner dialogue that you have in your head and you were to have one of your best friends say it how hurtful that would be so mean it's so fucking mean and I and like once I thought about it that way I was like oh my god like I need to be so much nicer to myself yeah, it's because true we don't even I don't even know that I'm being a bitch to myself sometimes yeah. but then I like sit back and I'm like because everything you just said like I was like oh my god if anybody ever said that to you I'd punch them in the face right. for you but like that's just not okay to say you yeah. know what I mean and I think you're a great interview I think oh, that there's value and strength in the fact that you're not you're not interviewing people like cookie cutter and like everybody else is nobody wants that that's I'm sorry that's boring I think and also too <laughs> like for me, for podcasts, especially for interviews, you want to hear something that's like a conversation and that you feel like you're in the room with. And I feel like you do a really, really great job oh, of 
cultivating that type of um, environment. I just, guests I get stressed out when I look at a notepad and I'm like, I don't have enough questions on here. And then I'm like, Shannon, you know, the one question you ask is going to lead to four different conversations. Yeah. So I have to like literally have self like pep up talks to myself yeah. all the time because I just like you, I have this image of like who a famous podcaster is, what, what they it's are. you. <laughs> It's literally you. Haley, you are that person. But like, <laughs> I, I, I created this like idea in my head and I'm like, I'm not ticking the boxes. It's like, you don't have to be that. Yeah, like, it's okay. You can make your own boxes. You can just be and your people, own person. Yeah. And people, I'm sure, I know for a fact, like you have to think about this. I know people are listening to your podcast and watch your stuff and they're like, I could never, I could never do what Shannon does. I could never do that. You know what I well, mean? Well, you guys like, can. You can all do everyone what we can, do. Everyone, everyone can, can do it. it. Okay. We're like just turning to the girl from Mean Girls. It's like, I just wish everyone had puppies and rainbows. Moves. the guy with the hoodie is like she doesn't even go here <laughs> yeah let's we ready ready okay thank you for listening to probably a podcast it's been an absolutely um Look like turmoil them. and we are so happy that you were here with us for this Haley. your wedding's gonna be stunning i love you thank you for coming on oh, um, i love you thanks for having we me. will be back yeah. like i said this um this episode or sorry this year we're gonna have more guests i'm gonna put myself out there and we're gonna have merch and live shows baby so yeah, i keep saying i saw it. your live show with kinsey right yeah kinsey has a I live had show her on landed like four years ago march three years third ago. in nashville there's a live show with kinsey for the i love you so much podcast yep. i will be there for that i'm excited and i can't wait to have my own live shows and you i'm saying it on every shows. episode so i hold myself accountable and you can hold me accountable that will do it and, and, I'll and hold you accountable. i've got some merch designs back and they're so you guys are gonna love i'm them. so excited for wait. you i didn't know i can't wait to see okay we're, i get to see whatever you guys do probably so long. you do love you guys bye bye, bye.